Hey everybody, it's Jason Loha here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about something uh, a little more nuanced than some of the general rules that I give uh, for body composition, such as just you know eating lower fat and so on. Um, and these are statements that I make as someone who has previously lost over 100 pounds of body weight. I've had to do it twice. For those who are unaware, I got really sick. I uh, couldn't train, spent like 10 months in bed, got depressed, regained weight I lost when younger, and then re-lost it again. So I did this, you know, in around 20-ish, early 20s the first time, and then I did it again in my early 30s, and now you guys see me where I am now, uh, you know, 47 years old. A relatively lean 215 and continuing to improve my body composition, coaching full-time, and I keep up with the literature on this stuff. I, I, I have a fascination with the scientific literature, so I try to keep up with all the current data on all these different health points, uh, health markers, uh, body composition, body fat, all this stuff. So I'm always keeping up with the latest literature because I really want to know what the advances are in the science on it. Um, and I tend to be obsessive about it. And so some things that I want to just compile down for all of you to make it very simple is that whatever, whenever we look at data on things, we always find that anything that improves insulin sensitivity tends to promote better body composition, right? We, we know this for a fact. Um, and when we look at different studies that study these same factors independently, they tend to show the same things. Okay, and that's the interesting thing, not when they're always measuring insulin sensitivity, but things that we do with our diet that improves insulin sensitivity when those same variables are studied in body composition, they tend to be favorable. In other words, they tend to promote more muscle and less body fat. And really, that, that should be our goal. I mean, we talk about bulking and cutting and all these other things, but really, what is the end goal? Our goal is to have muscle, have more muscle and less body fat, right? That's, that's usually the desired end result, even of bulking and cutting. Uh, and for overall health, that's the case. So, so really high on the list, obviously, you know, one of the things that we look at is, is keeping dietary fat relatively low, um, you know, being really important for body composition, but specifically, really, it's about keeping saturated fat low. Because when you start looking at the overwhelming uh, data there, we know that um, carbohydrates don't store as body fat in humans, right? Eating a diet that is very high in carbohydrates, and meaning when I say carbohydrates, I am talking about not refined sugars. So I'm talking about all other carbohydrates. But generally, again, keeping fiber high. But we'll jump back to that. Let's talk about the fat for a moment. We know that saturated fat is linked to reduce insulin sensitivity. Over and over and over, we know that. We know that polyunsaturated fats are linked to improve, improve insulin sensitivity. Well, the studies that have really looked at uh, body composition and intake of this have generally found the same thing. They found it correlates. We see in people who eat a, a higher ratio of polyunsaturated fats, particularly plant source, that's been the interesting thing with the data. The, the marine source doesn't always produce the same effects, even though there are other benefits to that. The actual plant source, uh, the ALA of omega-3, seems to be most correlated with this. Okay, and then omega-6, obviously, in plant form. When these are fairly high in the diet, they're the dominant form of fat relative to the saturated fat. Muscle mass tends to be higher and body fat tends to be lower. Also, central adiposity is lower. In other words, fat around the midsection tends to be lower. When saturated fat is higher, this tends to be higher, irrespective of other, other lifestyle factors. This is when things are looked at, such as diet, exercise, all these other things, right? We know this is the case. They're also correlated with improved insulin sensitivity, okay? So what I would tell people our take home here is our diet should probably be relatively low in fat. Um, I've made the case for very, very, very low fat diets, and I think that can work great for lean bulking. But if we're looking to optimize insulin sensitivity in the long term, there's a case to be made for eating a certain amount of, of healthy fats. And those healthy fats being omega-3, omega-6, polyunsaturated, and then uh, 
behind that monounsaturated fats in plant form, but what they're finding animal source monounsaturated fats don't seem to have these same benefits. So in other words, getting it from your chicken and steak doesn't produce the same effects as getting it from olive oil or an avocado. Okay, just be aware of this. This is what the data is tending to show. So if you're gonna eat animal products at all, they need to be very, 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 very lean. Okay? Notice I'm not telling people they have to do plant-based here, because you don't have to. So this is a, a good idea. All right, when it comes to the other stuff, eating a diet that is really high in fiber tends to improve insulin, insulin sensitivity. Irrespective of what the form of carbohydrate is, increasing fiber intake even offsets the negatives of refined sugars to some extent. Notice I did not say completely and in all cases. It can reduce the negative to some extent. You're probably better not eating refined sugars. Okay, let's, let's just spell that out, right? So what, what would we look at the, the accumulation of this data and determine that a diet that is relatively low in fat, and you know, maybe no more than 20%, that has a very high ratio of polyunsaturated, plant source polyunsaturated fats to, to saturated fat ratio and animal fat in general. All right, this is desirable. All right, our diet should be high in fiber. Well, that obviously means also probably fruits and vegetables, right? Fruits and vegetables, whole grains. These are what we should be getting our calories from. We obviously want enough protein to gain muscle, but protein intakes beyond, uh, you know, the thresholds that we discuss don't really appear to have muscle improving benefits. There can be some, some thermic effects and other stuff, but we can get all of those same thermic effects and everything else we're looking for just by eating more fiber. But that is also the one of the other take homes, the fiber intake. So if you're looking at the composition of your diet, irrespective of whether you're eating a, an omnivorous diet, uh, whether you're eating a plant-based diet, a mix of whatever, uh, whether you're doing a little higher carbs or a little, or a little uh, higher fat, any way you break it down, improvements in body composition tend to come from eating a lot of fiber and having a very high ratio of polyunsaturated to saturated fats in your diet. Okay. And when we look at the data that's out there, this is also correlated with improved body composition, meaning improved muscle mass and reduced body fat, particularly central adiposity, you know, in the abdominal area. All right. All right, guys. But that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I'll talk to you guys next time.